apologies in advance if, <laughs> if I'm looking all over the place. I'm using a um, an iMac computer. The little camera is at the top. I'm not too sure where to look because I don't want to be looking up here. I don't want to be looking over there. So when I'm actually looking dead at the screen, it looks like I'm looking to an angle. So apologies in advance if I look a little bit weird. Uh, I promise I'll get an external camera when I do a next video like this so I can know where I'm looking at. So the basis of this video is I actually had someone reach out to me on Instagram a couple of days ago and they asked me, they said, hey, Mr. Octopus, um, I'm looking at going full time. I'm not really enjoying my job. Um, what would you recommend? You know, you know, you've been doing it for a little bit. Um, can you please give me some thoughts on, on the matter? <laughs> what it came down to is basically I spoke to them a little bit. I, I had a bit of a, a back forward with them, those different things. I wanted to have a little bit of a conversation with them, well, you know, an audio conversation, just to basically delve into it a little bit. Because the thing is, though, that when you speak to someone on Instagram or you speak to someone on email or you speak to them on YouTube comments, as I, I, I reply to a lot of the, oh, I think I reply to everyone's comment, is that, you know, it's very hard to construe the meaning behind what you're trying to get across or it could be you know taken the wrong way or yeah, <laughs> as numerous people have accused me of before of having an abrasive personality uh which i can guarantee you it's only semi-true like you know it's a bit of an alter ego characterization but you know realistically like i've said numerous times in the podcast before is that I would rather you cry than you become destitute, right? So basically, that's a big thing for me. And this is something that I was trying to work out with this person that was emailing me is that you know, the crux of the conversation was that they've become dis very disillusioned with their job. Uh, they don't want to continue in that capacity. They don't want to continue in that role. They don't want to continue with that company. Therefore, they want to get eBay reselling. Um, <laughs> being being um, the annoying person that I am, I actually did a big, bit of Google searching because they're actually, their Instagram handle was actually their name and I actually tracked them down to the Facebook groups that we, um, Granny and I normally reference when we're doing our YouTube videos. So basically they popped up, you know, several times in the last month and basically, uh, if I say basically a lot, apologies in advance, it's my, kind of my filler word. I try and use a basically opposed to um. <laughs> so if that does annoy you, and you probably will recognize it now where I say basically all the time, apologies in advance. It's a nervous tick that I've got <laughs> in the last 15 years. I haven't been able to get rid of it. Uh, so what they did is they've been asking a lot of generic questions, which is fine. Yeah, and I've never had any issues with generic questions like Granny and I say normal times is that, I would rather you ask the question. Realistically, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Um, yeah, there's no such thing as, you know, a stupid answer either. <laughs> but what it comes down to is that, you know, you really need to have all the cards on the table when it comes down to full-time reselling, right? Um, so there you go, I just did um. <laughs> so you can count, you'll have, to have a little tally of if you know, basically you're um. But what it comes down to is having all your cards on the table, knowing where your financial situation is, knowing what your family situation is, what all these different things. A lot of the mistakes that I made uh, going full time when I did uh, was because I didn't know where I stood in, um, in the basic, the grand scheme of things. You know, I've been selling on eBay on and off, and I've said numerous times about 2007 that I first started selling. Might have been before, but that's what I really first. Yeah, my first memory of selling on eBay. Uh, I think I've stated before, I used to import arcade boards. Basically, like your, your arcade machines takes, you know, PCB boards. I used to import those into Australia um, quite cheaply from a lot of uh, European countries, then sell them for a markup. So, you know, a like, little bit of reselling without knowing I was doing reselling. Uh, and that was just purely to fund my arcade machine collection. Uh, so basically, that's what I enjoyed, and that's what I used to offset that. Uh, so Mrs. Octopus wouldn't get angry with me <laughs> from spending our funds. But I suppose going back to that, you know, and then, you know, flash forward a couple of years, around about 2013, around 2014, I started university through work. So basically, they put me through university. Um, I did a course. It was basically an online commerce course and a little bit of background information to this. And this is where my eBay journey, I suppose, you know, in, in its current iteration has begun, was that, you know, we had to create a hypothetical, you know, assignment course, um, a hypothetical business and what you would think hypothetically would happen, like, you know, ro roadblocks and all these different things from these different things. Then what I did is I thought, well, you know, screw doing a hypothetical. Is I actually ran a, a proper, you know, a Lego business, right? So I imported Lego, I bought Lego locally and sold it. And, you know, I was doing, you know, stupid amounts of money in my first year. So my first year, and this is how eBay's changed over the last, you know, last 10 years, um, especially like if we go with the 2014 date, 
I would go to Toys R Us, <laughs> yeah, that old shop that even exists before it closed down. Uh, buy a Lego set for $20, put it straight on eBay for $40 for free postage. Not knowing what I was doing, you know, like I had a, a bit of a customer service background, so I knew how to take care of that. Um, not really big on the finance background, so I had to learn that along the way. So I put it on for $40. Uh, back in those days, there's no such thing as promoted listings, right? And eBay used to do 15% off coupons purely funded by eBay once a month. So, um, and like literally, we'll put it on at four o'clock after I finished work, then five o'clock it was sold. So, I almost had enough time to, you know, to, to sell the item, then run down to the post office and send it. So, I was doing this in a ludicrous amount of time. Um, in that first year, I cracked $100,000 selling Lego. That market quickly dried up uh, a couple of years later. And what something that I learned very quickly on is that you need to be constantly changing and adjusting what you, the direction of your business. Um, I had a new competitor come in in the Lego space, like a direct competitor, I suppose, just another eBay account. Um, at this stage, I was probably, if you go off the, the quality listing report these days, I was probably in the top 10 of Lego. Um, because there's no real big Lego retailers on the straight eBay at that stage. Um, so basically, it's a new competitor, and I was really cocky, and I think thinking, well, you know, you're selling at a loss, really didn't take into consideration loss leaders. Basically, a loss leader is where you sell something at a loss, or it's funded from you know, a different source. So if you're taking profit from, you know, pile A, then running loss at pile B, you know, it kind of works out from that perspective. And it's primarily to build a customer base and to build feedback, right? So basically, this person was doing that. Um, I didn't really take into consideration what was going on and didn't really think too much of it because, like I said, I was cocky and I was quite comfortable where I was in the eBay space in that time. And he obliterated the Lego market. So my Lego eBay account at the start, uh, sorry, at this stage is around about 4,000. It's kind of lying a bit dormant. Um, and he's up to about 36,000 feedback in that same period of time. And he's, he's wiping the floor with Lego at the moment. So I would be quite surprised if he's in the top top three of lego in australia at this stage so be very mindful is that when you especially if you enter a market and i was only doing it part-time at this stage is that you constantly need to be evolving you constantly need to be looking at your competitors you constantly need to be looking at doing everything i know a lot of people in the youtube space um, and a lot of people in the facebook market groups is that resellers if you if you break it down to the simplest of terms they're competitors okay so realistically i know that we we all have a gentleman's agreements where we all help each other out and we you know put out free youtube videos where you know i talk about skylanders and how fantastic they are and how profitable they are in some capacity uh so basically there you go there's another one get your little tick out um you know, Skylanders are you know, plentiful, but like 99.9% .9 of them are completely worthless like this guy probably 15 20 dollars right but there's about four or five different variants of this guy that's completely worthless. Um, so just be very, very mindful of what you're actually ingesting from the YouTube space, especially if you're looking at going full time. Uh, I don't want people to, especially me and Granny, we, we, we try and as much as we try and relay some information, um, we, we try and do it for the betterment of, of people. I'm not going to say community because I don't like throwing that word around. Because, <laughs> so I, I don't think like... You know, that anyone should be following me, <laughs> but hey, each of their own. Um, but Granny, yeah, Granny's fantastic. So, yeah, by all means, give her, you know, channel a sub, give her a like, all those different things. She's fantastic. Um, yeah, does little videos, how to videos, they're fantastic. So, like I said, yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, don't unsubscribe. I need all the subscribers I can get. But yeah, like I said, the, I don't like using the word community, all those different things, because it kind of, to me, it kind of, um, you know, throws you in an undeserving position, right? Because I don't want to be seen as leading a community. I don't want to be seen as influencing a community. Realistically, and I think the crux of what Grady and I set out to do at the first place, just <laughs> sidetrack, <laughs> if you can't work it, I probably got undiagnosed ADHD, is that we're trying to, you know, put people in a different realisation that, you know, what you watch or what you consume through YouTube or Facebook Marketplace or Facebook groups and all these different things aren't necessarily the one way and only way of doing things. You need to look at it from different perspectives and see the unconscionable biases that the people actually delivering that information have. So, you know, for me, example, um, you know, I might be talking primarily about Lego and I, you know, I'll talk about Lego or I'll talk about um, all these different things because I don't sell in that market anymore. Um, so be very mindful is that if people are telling you what to buy or telling you what to do, you really need to do your own research. And that goes back to this full-time equation is that 
if that information's out there, and especially my videos only get two or 300 views, so <laughs> I'm not too worried about, you know, the Skyletter market falling down. But, you know, if, if, you know, the Aussie Flipper or two Aussie Thrifters or, you know, back from burnout starts talking about a product, um, talking about a bolo and all these different things, there's a good chance that that's going to dry up very quickly after that video comes out because they've got 10,000, 20, 30,000, 40,000 views, right? So a lot more people are looking for that product and then they'll start undercutting each other because it's not selling quick enough, then it will basically become a no-lo. Um, it's happened time and time again. So just be very mindful if you if you see a bolo list out there or the top 100 bolos and all these different things, be very mindful and look at the view count as well of that video. If it's got hundreds of thousands of views, there's a good chance that list is completely useless now. So going back to the original topic, sorry, I got sidetracked. <laughs> so this person reached out to me, asked me, um, what they want to do, what they're looking at. Basically, there's another one. Um, they're quite green. They've only restarted reselling in the last six months by the looks of it, which is not bad in itself. You know, like if you have had previous business experience and all these different things. So, yeah, a bit more conversation, a bit more conversation. Um, like I did create a bit of a list for what I would suggest to this person. So this, I'm just going to dribble it off now. So apologies in advance. I'll, <laughs> I'll try and fix it up in editing, <laughs> but like, yeah, what you're probably going to see is what you're probably going to get. So what I do is learn the platform. Like if you're looking at selling on eBay um, in the States, you've got Macari, you've got, um, you know, uh, Poshmark, you've got all the other platforms as well. Uh, in the UK, you've got Depop, and I think there's a couple others. You know, if you're in the UK, please put them down below because I'm not really au fait with the ones in the UK. There's only a couple of channels I watch from the UK, and um, they just normally talk about eBay. Now you've got Depop over there. So <laughs> there. so learn, learn the platform you're using. A lot of questions that I see in Facebook groups, especially from people that, you know, that are quite green and are looking to go full time because, like I said, they're disillusioned from their, their jobs that they're doing and all these different things is that they don't know the platform. They don't know the policies. They reach out straight to, to Facebook groups, uh, to YouTube, you know, content creators and all these different things. Uh, you know, Greedy and I copped a lot of flack a couple of weeks ago in regards to our, let's get me the camera down, um, in regards to our um, Facebook, market, uh, Facebook group video we did. So basically, we're, we're saying that. You need to do your research, and this is you know, infinitely um, relevant for those people who want to go full time, right? So basically, there's another one. Um, you want to make sure that you know the policies back to front, and if you don't know, don't go to Facebook groups, don't go to content creators, don't reach out to me on Instagram. Yeah, you know, by all means, yeah, you, know, you can. I'll give you the answer if I know it, but. Your first point of call should be face, uh, eBay, sorry. So you need to go back to that platform and go, hey, look, you know, hit up the customer service team, you know, get on the chat if you're on eBay Australia and ask them. Say, hey, look, this is the question I've got or this is the predicament in, um, you know, we've got a public holiday and the post office is closed. What, what do we do in this respect? Or I've had this buy negative feedback. What can I do to resolve this? Because um, what will happen is eBay will actually tell you over the chat, you might take a couple of times to flesh out, you know, someone that actually is willing to, to talk to you for a little bit more than short sentences because a lot of these, um, you know, customer service representatives are offshore. <laughs> I've got some, you know, great stories about the ones I spoke to in COVID. Uh, but they're, they're fantastic, right? So don't be rude to them. You know, they're doing the best they can because the language is, uh, sorry, English is not their first language. Um, so, you know, give them the patience and, you know, give them the respect that they're due. But ask them what the question is because what will happen is that eBay will send you a transcript to your email and it'll be on, on file on their end as well of what you've actually been told. So if something happens that, you know, your account gets suspended, yes, it does happen. Go back a month ago. I'll put a video up here somewhere um, to, you know, basically show you what <laughs> someone did lose their account over something so trivial. Um, yeah, and if something does happen, you know, you followed the guidance to a T and something has happened, you can go back and say, hey, well, look, you know, this is the transcript that I've had with, you know, Joe Bloggs. Uh, this is the point of, you know, stuff he's told me. This is what I've done to a T. Make sure you have done it to a T. Um, then what? this is what the outcome is. So can you please give me some indication of what I do from here? So you, you're covering yourself because if you go to eBay and say, hey, look, I spoke to the octopus on Facebook group and he told me this eBay's not going to care like realistically you've got no grounds to stand on is that why would they care you, you know i don't work for ebay so what, you know what <laughs> i'm not going to give you the wrong answer just to be you know play silly buggers but what it comes down to is you need to get from the horse's mouth then you're somewhat covered right so you've got more of a ground to appeal a decision or you know you said hey look you negative feedback this person you know try to scam me all these different things these ebay you need to go to them first right so basically look into these for consideration um so that's something to always do that was that one um 
look to YouTube for light inspiration uh, and not as a how-to guide, right? So I, I see a lot of videos come out at the start of the year. It's like, hey, I'm starting my eBay store from scratch or I'm doing a $5 challenge. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm actually doing a $10 challenge, but I'm not going to talk about that today. Um, you know, I'm doing all these different things. Uh, you know, I'm trying to fund America trip with, you know, $5 and all these different things. Um, be very mindful of those videos because they're not giving you the nuts and bolts of what goes into these different things, right? So like I said, there's a lot of phenomenal people out there. I don't think anyone's doing it to mislead or to, um, you know, cause carnage in the market per se. They're just doing it for entertainment purposes only. If you watch it from an entertainment point of view, fantastic. Like you can't go wrong. <laughs> so just do that. Um, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. And this is something that I reiterated to this person because one of their comments was saying, hey, look, I can't, you know, is there any way to expedite payments from eBay? Because I've got it set to daily, but when I make a sale on Friday, I don't get the money till Monday. Was, excuse me. Something along the lines of that. So basically what they're, they're having problems with their cash flow. And, you know, and when I did question them about that, we did have a lengthy <laughs> Instagram message session. Um, they're basically what they're doing is they're buying a lot more stock than they're, they're out taking. So they're buying very sell, slow, th sell, <laughs> I'll start again, very slow sell through items. There we go. <laughs> Finally got it. Um, like clothing, clothing, you know, and Grumpy Granny was talking about a video the other day. She bought a couple of pieces of items and they had a 365 day sell through rate. Um, I said in the previous podcast that I'm trying to look at things that will sell within, you know, idealistically, you know, the same day um, or, you know, worst case scenario, the 90 days. Um, once a big hit that 90 days, depending on the rarity, the scarcity of that buyer for that particular item, I'm just going straight to, you know, straight for the throat and price markdowns and all those different things because there's no use having an item sitting on your store becoming dormant um, just because you want to get top dollar because you've seen it on a YouTube video, you know, it's a massive bolo, you want to get top dollar, it's not going to be the case. Just clear it out, get the money back um, and go from that. And, yeah, like take it, look at it from a big picture, right? Like, yeah, if you, you know, sell something for you paid $5 at the op shop and you can only get $10 free postage, postage with it, you're going to lose money in that scenario, right? But the fact of the matter is that you're hopefully buying other items that have a, a higher profit margin. So you can offset that little loss. Don't make it more than <laughs> more often than not, but you can offset that loss with those big profit items. So don't don't have these items sitting around in the death pile or do all these different things. You know, if you do have a death pile, yeah, it might be a case of just going through it once a month and just clearing it out and redonating things. Or yeah, you know, if you don't like, don't pick up things you don't want to list. Like I, I do it all the time, right? So I, like. Yeah, previous you know puzzles and all these different things that you know grumpy granny screams at me all the time for is that you know i do it because i romanticize it's like, oh this looks fantastic this you know has a sell-through history this has got you know items that are actually selling yeah you know, actively you know in this condition but like for the puzzle for example it's a three thousand piece puzzle so yeah am i going to dedicate you know a whole weekend you know let's say 24 hours over a course of a weekend to to do this puzzle to sell it for a hundred dollars and then that brings it down to what four or five dollars and well probably even yeah four dollars an hour uh for for that return on investment so you kind of want to <laughs> not not pick up those project puzzles pieces or project pieces um so basically make sure you have your cash flow uh squared away is the crux of that one so basically cash flow cash flow cash flow if you don't know what cash flow is go on go on the internet google these things you know ask an accountant ask you know someone in the business space like i said don't go to you know these self-proclaimed youtube um amazon <laughs> courses and all these other courses that are floating around that charge you you know 20 bucks a month whatever it is to to you know basically learn the secrets and all these different things because they're more often than not they're not fit for purpose for your particular purpose, right? So I'm not saying across the board, but they don't take an individual's capacity on board. They'll basically look at it from, you know, what fits the many kind of puzzle piece. Uh, defined goals. This is something that I caught up with myself uh, before I actually went full-time reselling though, is I didn't have really any goals down pat other than, you know, I wanted to replace my full-time income. So before I left my previous occupation, and a lot of people know what it is, goals down plan you know you need to have something that you, your business want to work towards you know if you're wanting to look at going replacing a full-time income it's not going to happen straight away so basically you're going to need to you know set like daily goals sale goals daily listing goals uh weekly sales targets all these different things and revise it on a regular basis be mindful of what's going on in the economy at the same time you know you really want to be looking at it from a macro perspective to say hey if I'm selling Lego, for example, you need to be looking at, you know, does Lego sell all this time of the year? You know, learn your, your platforms. eBay has like a Terapeak system, which is a fantastic 
research tool. Uh, it will give you an idea of what's going on. So, yeah, if, you, if you're looking at getting into the genes niche, which is what this person was for, all, for, um, for some reason, is that, yeah, it's good now because we're moving into the colder weather. But if you're actually starting up in November, you're not going to be really selling that many genes over the summer period. Yes, you will still sell some genes, but just be very mindful. Um, and realistically, have some realistic goals of of what's actually going to sell, what's what's going on, and you know what's available to you. Yeah, you, know, you really need to look into to stock management and stock availability as well. Uh, a business plan. Uh, oh, I was guilty of doing this uh, or not doing this when I first started as well. Is actually have you know write a business plan. If you don't know what a business plan is or you don't know how to write one, Chat GPT is probably <laughs> the best thing you're going to do. Yeah, go in there, write me a business plan for eBay, looking to make you know two thousand dollars profit a, a week, and you know punching the variables and all these different things. And it should print out you know a punch out a, a you know comprehensive business plan. Don't just print off what Chat GP two is. Go through, read it, um, then obviously make adjustments. What's going on as well? Just be very, very, very mindful. Is that you need to be looking at it from this perspective, not just you know like this. Uh, spreadsheet. <laughs> you can't stretch this is enough. Uh, reach out to uh, Tools of the Thrifters because they've got a fantastic spreadsheet. Um, I think Chris Furlong and Ethan Ruschok, if you're in Australia as well, um, they have done one. Uh, but like I said, I, I use a Tools of the Thrifters one and they are fantastic. And like I said, there's probably spreadsheets all over the, available all over the world for reselling. So, or have some sort of platform. I know in America that they've got Reseller Genie, I think it is, and basically tracks all the all the data of what you paid for it. Uh, what you sold it for, and, you know, all your, your profit margins and all these different things. We don't have anything like that. So basically, I think the best course of action would be a spreadsheet. Make sure you document everything onto it. So the, the sale price, if you're taking money at the ATM, keep all your receipts, you know, all these different things, download data and all these different things. And engage in a, an accountant, chat GPT, oh, sorry, chat GPT, accountant and CPA. Uh, that's what you want to be doing the next step. So this is what you want to be doing before we even start selling, right? Um, get all these different things, get them all squared away before you start ramping the business up. Look at an emergency savings. Um, what will, you know, what will happen if you don't get you know sell an item for two months or three months or four months? You need to have that that stockpile in the background. Just make sure you get some savings. I'm not going to tell you what it is. What I recommend, I've, I've heard a lot of people throw around the six months, twelve month, um, you know, savings behind them. Yeah, it, it's probably the best cause. Yeah, probably the more money you got behind you, the better. Um, yeah, so that's something to do, and constantly look for new opportunities. So. If you, if you can't work out the way this video is going, it's probably, I wouldn't recommend full-time reselling, you know, especially in this economy, especially for this person, even for myself, right? So realistically, about two months ago, I returned to full-time work after, you know, working full-time eBay reseller for two years. Um, and, you know, it, it's taken a lot of stress off my plate. You know, I was watching a couple of videos from Media Madman. Uh, he's a new Australian YouTuber reseller as well. He left his employment because he was, um, yeah, had a lot of stress going on at the time. Yeah, realistically, what I what I've told this pe person, yeah, you know, dissatisfaction with their job is that look at other opportunities. Don't just be bogged down because you know, and you know, I know my situation was very similar to Media Madman. Is that yeah, you, know, you become very disillusioned with the 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 corporate world and all these different things because of one organisation, right? Like. <laughs> Find another job, you know, even if it pays less, you know, you're still probably going to make more money than you will on eBay. Uh, make you, make yourself happy and just be mindful of that, you know, if you are making a mozza of money, if you're making $120,000, $130,000, $140,000 a year, there's probably some sort of stress aligned with that position, right? So you're not going to give $120,000 for free. <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there will be some hard decisions and there will be some, you know, mistakes that you make or, you know, something that's aligned with that position that makes it, you know, garner that much money. Uh, skills building as well. So basically, if you are looking at selling, you know, full time and you wanting to pursue down this path, look at building your skills. So what I said to this person as well is that if you do go full time or you are looking at eBay and you're looking at moving to another job, use your use your experience as eBay to yeah you know, to page your resume. Like don't embellish things, but yeah, you know, if you've done about you know customer service, you've done you know like stock management, you've done yeah you know, logistics, you've done all these different things that you could probably you know you know, bring into your resume space and invest in other opportunity and wealth building activities. This is something that I'm, that I was guilty about is that I would, you know, get all my money and reinvest into stock. You know, this roll and roll and roll. I was, wasn't actually paying myself over that two years, which, you know, <laughs> wasn't the best way to run a business. But, you know, just be very mindful is that, you know, like I, I re did a, a reaction video a couple of weeks ago is that, 
if your eBay still gets banned, how are you going to liquidate that stock? You know, if you've got $100,000 worth of eBay price stock, um, you, someone's not going to come to you, knock on your door and give you $100,000 for that stock. You, if you're going to liquidate, you're probably going to be about $20,000 or maybe even less, $15,000, $10,000 for that 100 grand worth of stock. So be very mindful is that you need to be looking at other opportunities and other things that you can actually generate revenue sources from. So Blake and I have spoken about this numerous times is that, you know, going back to work or if you are doing full-time reselling, you know, and there's, you know, you do your, your, your reselling component by 10 o'clock and you've got the rest of the day to your free, you know, look at doing Uber or look at Uber Eats or, you know, something else to, to kind of fill in that gap just to give you a little bit of extra income. Um, but, yeah, th that's what's going on. So, basically, my advice to this person like especially in this economy um not i wouldn't recommend going full-time and like i said it's a basis for everyone's you know everyone's different everyone's opportunity uh is different you know like i live in the capital city so i'm living in canberra um what i hear a lot from is that people don't know how to go you know stock you know stock issues are the problem but then you know the people re respond to that saying well you need to go further afield you need to go further afield when does it get to the point where you're going too far like it's negating you know if you especially if you're you know filling your, your tank up you know four or five times a week just to get that extra stock but, yeah all these different things but what it comes down to is i think that you know people should still remain in the corporate environment if not you know work in some way like keep bouncing between jobs until you find one you like but be mindful of you know potentially Use reselling, you know, from a capacity, maybe from a, a replenishable stock perspective. Um, you know, like you know, if you can order, you know, bulk in, you know, for example, if you can bulk, you know, if you can sell envelopes, for example, uh, you can get them in, in stock, you can sell them and they sell pretty quickly. Just do it that way. Then, you know, it's almost like a set and forget exercise. You just basically order your stock in, put it on eBay and then send it as you go. There's no requirement for you to go out and you know, purchase stock and all these sort of things. Um, and learn your niches. If you're looking at getting into things, look at Terapeak and go from all those different things. But I'm very curious to see what you think. Um, you yeah, know, put in the comment section field below just to see, you know, what, what you said is, a, you know, would you go full-time reselling or would you <laughs> remain part-time? But, um, yeah, I'd be quite curious. But anyway, um, thank you again for watching. And uh, if you liked it, please like, comment, and share. And uh, don't forget to check out Grumpy Granny. Bye.